guys welcome back to my channel this is restore refurb works today we have a tear down and clean of this logitech g403 wired gaming mouse previously we have done the one which is wireless today this is the one with a wired and for the cable length is a 2.1 meter since we are at this and it's of a braided material so braided meaning is uh, a bit tougher and stiffer it can withstand some rubbing if you know what i mean so for the mouse uh, exterior is rubberized on the left and right for more grip dimensions wise is 124 mm long the width at the thickest part is 68 mm and the thickness is 43 mm so for you guys who like a big boy mouse this is the one to go so on the bottom part here right there's an indentation here it's supposed to house a 10 a gram a weight but however the ex owner had uh, lost it maybe use it for something else i guess so uh, spraying some goo gone i'm gonna remove the mouse feed um, the stock one right as advertised on the website it can last you 250 kilometers of swiping and uh, this is quite used i'm not gonna reuse it i've ordered some from uh, ebay to replace it so some specs about this mouse right there's five settings for the dpi it can be set from the 200 to 12,000 dpi six customizable button left right click center scroll click dpi click and two sides button so after uh, removing the mouse feed, it reveals four screws. Removing it, then we'll be able to pry it open easily using a, a flat, a plastic uh, pry tool. So don't remove it, it uh, totally. First of all, we need to uh, release the catch for the ribbon cable. This is responsible for delivering power and information for the um, mouse clicks and the uh, RGB lighting. So opening up um, first impression, it looks very very similar to the one which is a wireless except for this is without the battery plug and uh, additional cable that links the mouse to the computer. So opening the case, I have realized that I broke some uh, plastic clips. This um, There's no point um, gluing it back because we have two screws securing the bottom to the top case. So we leave it at this is. The top side of the mouse looks very very similar to the uh, wireless ones. So from the structure, we see that there's five screws removing the cover that houses the RGB, two um, screws holding uh, the mounts for the side buttons, and an array, I call it octopus of um, uh, PCB boards and wires for the various buttons. So let's uh, remove the five screws first and the sneaky one that I hit right smack in the center hidden from sight and remove the cover for the RGB lighting then we can access the other parts. So for those that have not seen uh, the last video on the G403 wireless, this particular screw is uh, unique because there's a squarish metal tab uh, on, on it that holds the side button. So once you remove it, uh, put it aside, uh, that will only go back to one place. So re after removing the five screws, right, this piece comes off easily without breaking any plastics. So if you guys have seen my last video, you know that I've broken the plastic and uh, tried my best to uh, stick it back. So here, right, these four screws holding on to the left and right click, they are a different shape. Short one with a flat uh, pen base, uh, pen head, sorry. So the trick to removing these two left right uh, press button plastic will be using a flat pry tool, pry it from the bottom over here like this and it should come off easily and especially for this mouse right there is this tension spring um, for uh, each of the left right button so on the website it sells you as it 
giving you a constant uh, tension on a spring so there's minimum um, effort needed to compress it so i'm not sure how true is it but there's something there's some springs over there so more screws to remove as we go right for uh, viewers who are new to tearing down your uh, spoil electronics um, do so-called uh, housekeep uh, your screws make sure that you know that uh, where it comes from it's a bit tedious but the best way is you can take a picture uh, every step of the way how it comes uh, out then when you're uh, trying to install it uh, work backwards refer to pictures for me I don't do that <laughs> uh, I go by, by feel So for the switches are um, well secured by two screws onto their secondary PCB and linked by a wires. So for these screws are the standard ones but I see that um, in the future if um, the switches fail right it's quite troublesome to uh, remove it. You need to remove it from the inside, um, remove the PCB, desolder it then you'll be able to swap uh, the switch. So the stock ones, left, right, the side buttons, the center DPI button, they are using uh, Omron switches, which is quite standard. So in the, my future videos, I might um, make the whole mouse silent. Let's see how it goes. So two more screws here uh, to remove another secondary board that uh, holds the ribbon cable. So these screws you can see I'm uh, that get I'm gathering right these are the same size. So next uh, the last two screws that hold this uh, weird L shaped looking plastic onto the uh, top case we just need to remove it and everything should come off. This is one more thing different from the uh, wireless mouse is this uh, center piece uh, is removed using an allen key this one is a size uh, 2 then from here we need to pry it a bit then it should release the two different uh, plastic parts It's amazing that even this button they are using the Omron uh, switches. I guess uh, it would save some cost or uh, manufacture easily if you are using a simple uh, four pole uh, switch, round switch. Okay, that will be a device over here because I have owned the wired and wireless mouse, but when logging, um, hooking it up to the computer, right, uh, launching the G Hub, uh, it shows that the mouse is uh, inactive or not detected so um, I'll advise that you can go to the uh, Logitech uh, website look for the uh, drivers or uh, support there should be one that is um, for this mouse which is a firmware update you just need to update the firmware uh, they will flash the chip inside then after which you'll be able to um, detect the mouse 
So later on, I will create another video with a clear and concise uh, uh, step uh, step by step walkthrough how to update this uh, firmware and uh, showing you that the mouse is from inactive to uh, detected. Then you'll be able to play around the functions of the, the lights. So viewers, if you have stayed till now, thank you so much. From my uh, YouTube analysis, right, 99% of you have not the subscribed. Do help the channel by subscribing. It does not cost you a cent, but it will give us a lot of support. So second look at the uh, uh, main board, right, and recalling the previous teardown. So. Uh, it does not seem as uh, complex as the wireless one because not forgetting we do not have the uh, battery pack the connectors for the battery um, the wireless uh, part so back to where we were we have to remove uh, two screws uh, on the top and the bottom then we'll be able to uh, release this auxiliary uh, board uh, that holds the encoder and the center uh, uh, click button so the whole thing comes off and there's a plastic shroud um, on the wheel which is a similar part as the wireless one so uh, two more screws to remove before we can access sorry four more screws to remove before we can access the board below So we got some souvenir dust that it enters the mouse from the scroll button. So usually dirt from the fingers, from the air conditioner, uh, it will uh, go in uh, via that access. So for the main board, there's a couple of screws to remove, then we should be able to lift it out easily. Some other info about this mouse, the weight itself is 87 grams and uh, there's an onboard memory for one user uh, and two lighting zones and the uh, lighting zones will be the scroll wheel and the uh, G logo at the rear end. So as usual, using some contact cleaner to give the board a good scrub. So we have the sensor prism below. The uh, chip itself is 16-bit uh, ARM. The chip is a PMW3366. It's supposed to be a, a high-end one, liked by gamers as advertised on the website. Its uh, reporting rate is 1000 times per second, 8 times faster than regular mouse. But of course, yeah, paying 8 times more money than a regular mouse. This is what you should get. Here we have a look at the switches. All these are using Omron's one, but a variation. They have some of the regular ones for the side button because you don't uh, click it as much but however for the um, left right button they are rated at 20m but however in the market there are those they are rated at uh, 30 million 40 even 100 million i guess moving on to assembly first thing in will be the wire uh, slotting it back to where it should be then the main board should go in so uh, it should sit flush, if not you need to readjust it, otherwise you have headache uh, closing the top uh, and the bottom. So the few screws to attach the uh, main board, screw it in with caution and do not um, uh, rip 
the threads. Viewers might be puzzled why uh, this part that um, secures the magnet onto the mouse uh, looks like this because on the wireless version right there are wires to connect onto the main board I guess they are working to uh, developing um, the mouse that's capable for wireless charging but not for the 403 uh, uh, wireless next as you can see I'll install the bracket for the uh, mouse wheel then later on uh, applying some silicone grease onto the uh, shaft for the scroll wheel and also the encoder so one of these days I wish to buy something with a damaged encoder and try to uh, desolder and change uh, for viewers uh, references As we go along installing the various parts on the finished product, try on for example the scroll, the buttons, make sure everything is in place, it's level before moving on to the next step. It doesn't uh, hurt to uh, check twice rather than till the end we have to dismantle everything and find or uh, troubleshoot what went wrong. It's always nice to see some lighting uh, after installing it. It means that we have not killed it. <laughs> Moving on to the next part. Uh, this is quite complex. We'll install the various brackets in. Then uh, the secondary um, PCB board that holds the octopus of uh, switches. So when working on this part right, I find that Logitech is quite kind using the just nice uh, uh, amount of uh, cable and also a slightly harder cable for these uh, switches because uh, when uh, uh, moving it around, you will know that which wire goes where and uh, they design these uh, uh, hooks for you to hook, a, hook the, the, the cable in place so it doesn't uh, a snag on the, the buttons or the internal parts
So after negotiating uh, a bit with these switches, it went back in place for the left and right click and also the center DBI click, right? is secured with two of their this standard screws. This part that I'm installing right now will be so-called the tensioning spring. It has a very uh, slim wired spring on the reverse side. So uh, when, the, uh, for example, the left or right click, when it's not engaged, uh, uh, a certain force is applied on it. So uh, it actuates uh, quicker with those that are not uh, spring assisted. Coming to the end, right now we are installing the left and right blades of the mouse. So uh, it's good that you can uh, put it a bit forward, slide it back so that it doesn't interrupt with the tensioning spring. So from here, you need to give you a firm press for it to sit into its uh, uh, position. So while doing this teardown, I was thinking if this blade, can it be made out of carbon fiber? So if it's possible, it will be very, very cool.
So testing of the functions uh, before uh, screwing in the rest of the, uh, the four screws. Making sure every function is correct, no double clicking. Dear viewers, if you have watched to the end of the video, thank you very much. Show some support by subscribing uh, to our channel and uh, stay tuned for more um, tear down and clean content. Over here, there's my uh, Instagram handle. Uh, so in the future, we'll be doing some giveaways and uh, lucky draws and winners will be announced over there. So thank you. See you again.